I chose to do my homework assignment over phonotactic therapy here. Um, phonotactic therapy was founded by Shelley L. Velleman. She has a PhD and she did most of her work at the University of Massachusetts and the University of Vermont throughout her teaching career. I got all of my information from a published article called Phonotactic Therapy. Um, it's by Shelley L. Velleman and it's published in Seminars in Speech and Language. Um, it was volume 23, number one. So if we go over here, the target population is children with amateur speech patterns and they're usually unintelligible. So the associated theories, um, structural phonologists focused on the functional role of phonemes like phonemes versus allophones. And this was in the 1950s. Um, next was the um, generative phonologists, and they emphasized the role of allophones, phonemes, and uh, phonemic distinctive features. So that brings us to the distinctive feature theory, which involves the idea that speech sounds contrast because of their features, like voicing, place, and manner. So um, that's how you can tell speech sounds apart is because they have these distinctive features. And final, finally, we have nonlinear phonology, which emphasizes the relationship between the larger segments of language like syllables, words, and phrases. So over here we have um, the six phonological, the six major phonological patterns in phonotactic therapy. Um, and so here's the patterns, and then here's the strategies that Velleman suggested. So first we have deletion of the onset consonants. And if you follow this line, it goes to, um, the recommended strategy is to target the inclusion of initial consonants and giving the child positive feedback for any CV shape, regardless of the accuracy um, in the initial consonant. So next we have the deletion of coda. Um, and if you follow this line, it, um, the suggested strategy is to repeat CVCV CV sequences, gradually working up to the removal of the second vowel. So the article gave the example of little bunny foo foo, and um, you would have the child say it along with the book, and um, you would stop the child before the last vowel. So um, they would say foof, and then eventually you would get them to say oof. Um, next, we have difficulties with harmony and reduplication. So if we follow this up to here, um, the recommended strategy is to, um, to focus on words with consonant harmony. And essentially this means that it begins with the same sound that it ends with. So um, examples would be like, um, like pop and kick. Um, the article mentioned that this was not a long-term, like not a viable long-term pattern, but it may help bridge the gap between CV and CVC words. Next, we have reduction of multisyllabic words. And if we follow this one, it goes up here to, and the recommended strategy is to use words with reduplication. So um, you would introduce words with reduplication like baba for bottle. Um, and even though the child still isn't producing it correct, it helps bring awareness to the fact that there's two separate sounds. So baba, because baba for bottle is a lot closer than just saying ba. So um, that's one way to help with intelligibility. Um, next, we have the um, reduction or misproduction 
of word stress patterns. So if we follow this up here, it says target iambic words. Um, so you would want to target the iambic words first because if a child's going to omit a syllable, it's usually the weak syllable and iambic words have a weak syllable and then the stress syllable. Um, example this, of this would be like above or giraffe. And by working on it like this, it would help bring awareness to the weak syllable and maybe that will help the child not omit it and say the word correctly. And then finally, we have reduction of consonant clusters. And if we go up here, um, the suggested strategy is to focus on the marked sounds. Um, so in development, uh, clusters are, they typically progress from deletion of the entire cluster to deletion of one element of the cluster. And then it goes to substitution. So they make a sound, but it's not the right one. And then finally the correct production. So the strategy used for this pattern is to focus on the marked element. And this, the marked element is the, it's like more uncommon in the language. So it's usually harder to um, produce.